Good evening. I'd like to thank you for once again joining us here at the Greenbrier Church Online for our Wednesday evening prayer prompt. At our local gym, they offer two different sets of lockers. There's a locker room where you can change clothes and use your own lock, or outside of the locker rooms, there's a wall with smaller lockers where you can set your own combination. The gym provides these lockers so that if you're already dressed to work out, you have a place to put your keys, your wallet, AirPod, case, phone. It's one of the few amenities that everybody seems to take advantage of. Have you noticed that when something's important, we take steps to guard it? I think that's why people put their wallets in those lockers instead of just leaving it out where somebody could walk off with it. That's why we lock our car doors in a parking lot. But according to Solomon, there's something much more important that we need to make sure that we're keeping safe. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, we read, Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. According to Solomon, out of all the things that we try to treasure and keep safe, the most important thing we need to protect is our heart. But honestly, when it comes to our heart, oftentimes we just go with the flow. We don't pay an awful lot of attention to the music we're listening to or the books we're reading or the movies and the shows that we're watching, the conversations that we're having, or the friendships that we make. Little by little, we change. Our outlook changes. Our demeanor changes. That's why guarding our hearts must be a priority in our life, because our heart controls our life. Solomon wants us to understand that everything, our words, our thoughts, our choices, our decisions, our priorities, everything that happens in our life begins in our heart. When our heart is full of God's love, beautiful words and ideas flow out. I think if you really want to be happy tomorrow, you need to guard your heart by counting your blessings, spending time in the scriptures, praying, maybe singing some worship songs, spending time with people that love you and love Jesus. But if you want to guarantee that you're going to have a miserable tomorrow, then just fill your heart with thoughts of self-pity, assume the worst, Beat yourself up, replay your biggest mistakes over and over again in your mind, hang out with complainers, and join them. For us to live in the joy that we're created to experience, we must protect our hearts from bitterness, impatience, greed, anger, jealousy. And those are the things we gravitate towards because they're easy. If we live our life in cruise control, we allow bitterness to overtake our hearts and our minds. Tonight, Solomon is encouraging us to put in the effort to guard our hearts against unsafe people, unhealthy relationships, ungodly activities and entertainment. In his letter to the Christians in Philippi, Paul talks about the joy they're supposed to be experiencing in their relationship with Christ. In his letter, he encourages them to guard their hearts by thinking about things that are good and worthy of praise, things that are true and honorable, things that are pure and beautiful, and respected. Paul understood the power of our thoughts and, and how that molds our personalities and moves us into the realms of God's peace and joy. For the most part, thinking is an activity that's fallen on hard times. We're too busy to think. Our minds are congested with noise. It's hard to meditate when we have a phone attached to our hands at all times and incoming texts and emails arrive like missiles destroying any chance that we have for peace. We don't ride horses into town anymore. We don't get to go out into the fields and work quietly throughout the day. Our days no longer end when the sun goes down. Today, we're bombarded with noise from the time we wake up in the morning until Surrey turns off all the lights at night. We rush from place to place like a herd of stampeding buffalo. Being still and knowing God has become a cultural sin. And we've lost the ability to guard our hearts and our minds. That's why tonight I want us to take some time to be still. I want us to make a plan to find some time in a place where we can do the work of guarding our hearts. Tonight as we pray, we need to be determined to make the choice not to let anything take us off the course God has for our lives. Instead, we need to look to Jesus, lean on His peace and His love so that we can live a life that is worthy of our calling. Will you pray with me? Father, we thank you for the chance that we have to just take a moment right now to, to just stop and to spend time with you. 
Father, we pray that we will find the place and the area to be at peace and to just enjoy Your presence. Father, I ask that we will be determined to guard our hearts by filling that space in our lives with Your Word, with Your presence, that we will pray more, that we will read our Bibles more, that we will really put effort into being the children You have called us to be. Father, because I know, we know, that if we will just put in the effort, that if we will just draw close to You, that our lives will be filled with Your joy and Your peace. So Father, it's not the the desire that we struggle with. It is the gumption, the courage, the, 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 the strength to move forward and do what we know we're supposed to do. Father, help us find that courage and that strength to follow You and to draw close to You. Lord, we ask this prayer through the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you for joining us here tonight. I hope that you have a wonderful time of peace and quiet in prayer. I also want to let you know that at the end of this month, the end of July, we're going to be transitioning from a time of prayer into a Bible study here on Wednesday nights. And so our Wednesday evening prayer prompts are going to be coming to an end. I hope that you found them beneficial. I hope over the next week or two that we'll be able to call you to another time of prayer, another time of peace, another time to grow in your relationship with God. We will continue to offer our services on Sunday morning, and we look forward to seeing you then. Have a great day, and know that you're loved. Please, go in peace.